right, you're watching FRCD on CAN TV. Family Resource Center on Disabilities is the Region 1 Parent Training and Information Center of Illinois. You can reach us at 312-939-3513. Email us at info at frcd.org and visit our website at www.frcd.org. We encourage you to follow us on Twitter at FRCDPTI and subscribe to our YouTube page at FRCD1231. We also encourage you to like us on Facebook. Family Resource Center on Disabilities is not a law firm or a legal service agency. Family Resource Center on Disabilities will not provide any type of services that may be construed as practicing law including but not limited to giving legal advice, drafting legal documents, or representing families in any type of legal proceeding. Hi, my name is Paula Wills and you're watching FRCD on CAN TV where we discuss special education, parent advocacy, and resources for families of children with disabilities. And today, again, I'm happy to welcome back Zabita Pasha to the show. Thank you Hi, for Zabita. inviting me. Hi, Paula. She is our bi bilingual parent trainer and today we are talking about da 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 back to school. Yep, it's, it's that time of year again, and we are talking mainly not just heading off to your, your grocery store or, you know, your Target and grabbing some notebooks. We're talking about making sure that you are ready, your IEP is ready, and you're ready for tackling uh, those first months of classes and understanding what's in that IEP so that you and your child can hit the ground running uh, in this upcoming school year. So uh, Zabita, today uh, we talked about that we're going to have um, our checklist about your child and why do you think what why do you think we need a checklist? Well, just to make it easy on ourselves, our life, you know, just a background on me again, I'm a parent of a 17-year-old and our life is a little bit complicated. What does that mean? We have too many things to do. The checklist is just kind of a visual for us to help us kind of navigate with the teacher and with the school, with the staff, what is needed to be done, and also introduce our children to the school community. It's really, really important for the incoming school or the receiving school to know who your child is, what are their strengths, what are their likes, what are their likes, to kind of kind of make sure to prepare the landscape for your child. Specifically with the IEP, you have the, that big document, you have uh, all of those goals lying out in that big document. So the checklist will make it very simple and easy. Yes, and uh, as you said, and addressing it with the teacher because, you know, it's not just, you know, you trying to gather everything for that school year. You may have more than one child. Well, you can just imagine uh, your child's teacher or teachers have maybe 30, 40, 60 kids that they are managing. So you want to make sure that uh, the teachers understand that, you know, you're eager for the school year, you're eager to hit the ground running, and um, that, you know, everyone's on the same page about the types of goals and accommodations that uh, your child needs. So um, one of the first things we, we talk we want to talk about is on this checklist, your checklist, not the checklist you're showing um, you're showing your teacher, <laughs> your child's teacher, but your checklist is reviewing your child's IEP. Is the list the list of the things to do for back to school. Make sure you refresh your mind by reviewing your child's IEP. You may have goals that they have been worked on from the last school year. So the incoming school year, you may have one or two benchmarks. So familiarize yourself and refresh your mind. Okay, what my child is supposed to work on? How does he learn? It's so important to relate to the new teachers, the staff, and to the new school. Before we even go to that IEP, if your child is changing schools, the building, kind of the brick and mortar right. bu building, make sure you take your child for a tour of the school. 
show them you know the entry show them you know the playground you know start with the things that they may like especially if they are small kiddos yeah. they like the playground so show them here is the playground and here is your new school then you start you work your way up to introduce your child to the teacher and in that introduction make sure you have a picture because like Paula right. said teachers they may have so many students they may not remember who your child is so make sure that there is a picture on that chip on that introduction introducing my child to the school community I simplify it for many years and I just put my child's name her likes dislikes and also what are her medical condition or right. uh, things that they need to know yeah, I, allergies and medical condition you know that can come with the heat and whatnot so that that is different from the chick the the, the special education chick okay yes yeah, so yeah we're uh, we, let's clarify our checklist here okay so yeah we there is a checklist for you the parent just to kind of like prepare for yourself this is for you things to do to for back to school thank you and then there's the checklist that you like a cheat sheet you may want to show uh your teacher again the the uh the image, you know, the picture, the photo of your child. Uh, as you said, their dislikes, you know, um, when they're overwhelmed, you know, generally I do this, this, and that. Or you if know. something happened during the summer, I right. have worked with many families whose children got very sick. Mm -hmm. And that had impact them and also had a side effect beside with the disability. And they are on medication for those things and those sicknesses. So even though they may have the IEP, don't take it for granted. Make sure you read the IEP. Right. You relate to them what are your child's strengths and what they want to learn. Beside the IEP, there are cases where you see a growth and mm -hmm. you see a little bit of progress, especially for those who have some speech problems right and here they are with day camp kiddos and they pick up so when they go back to school say hey he is picking up he is doing the back and forth conversation he is uh, giving me the eye contact that type of they may look very minimum but they are meaningful as an information for the teacher so they can pick up on those things and they can understand because here's the IEP that was done last year possibly in March and you are now at August so That's March right. to August is a five months timeline a lot can happen bad or good and I hope it is good and you need to relate that to the teacher so absolutely the checklist for you to review the IEP is very very important to remember what my child is working on so I can keep up with absolutely. that absolutely yeah you want to make sure that the goals that um, they're working on are meaningful that they're challenging you know so maybe they may have met some of those goals over the summer you never know as you said uh, day camp maybe there was a program and you notice hey you know they met this goal can't you know we may need to up the goals that we we have in the current IEP sooner than maybe waiting till November to uh, you know re revisit those goals. So those are I mean those are things you want to look at the IEP. It's like oh wait he already he's he's already doing this or she's already doing this. So um, but back to school typically the kids need a little bit of time for adjustment. That's true. And they need you know that adjustment time to see how much they remember from last school year. They kind of do like a little inventory in their minds and to see what they remember and what they recall so during that recall make sure you are in tune to the teacher notes and keep that log of communication with the teacher how yes. was the day and I think that's one of the things that you have um, so one thing we have here is um, again create a teacher contact log you know this is something you want to have ready um, and logging in the the you know the correspondence you have with the teacher via where is a conversation or was it email you know uh, you know you want to jot down what was discussed and also you want to ha also have made uh, an information folder or uh, what we like to use is the Illinois student record keeper um, you want to be documenting uh, your child's progress uh, you know as the school year starts you know and even maybe things you noticed over the summer where were they you know is you know are um, are these uh, solutions is the new curriculum working and you know 
Judge very, very good point. Yeah. You brought up the curriculum. When your child go back to school, make sure that you talk to the teacher and ask those informed, very important questions. What is the curriculum this year? And you need to know the source of the curriculum. Basically, the elementary, it's kind of like a typical curriculum across the board. Right. But if they are in high school and in they are in cluster programs, they do they, they use different yeah. material. Nevertheless, even at elementary school, we as a family have seen kind of some sheets from different books. So we need to know what is the source of the curriculum. Is it at that grade level? Your child is in third grade level. Are they, are they accessing that third grade level material based on their ability, but with modification? And I think you have a yes. slide that says make sure that you are in tune and communicate with your teachers about the accommodation and the modification and the services. And I think this slide right. services means modifications for your child so and, yeah, and before I want to go go into that I also want to point out and make sure you understand you know you don't be afraid to ask about what strategy are they using to reach those goals and you know with the through the accommodations like what strategies are you using you know be a part of that conversation so um as we um sorry uh we're saying, again, as Zabita pointed out, make a list of accommodations and services your child is supposed to have, which is in the IEP. You know, uh, make you sure just, you have a... You just double check. I didn't mean to cut you yeah. off. But you just double check in and, and you're making sure that they are in tune. Again, they may have the IEP and the assumption they will read it. And the assumption should be they, they have to read it. But you hone in on that particular benchmark or those things that you want right. your child to learn. And also make sure that if there is something extra they need to know, even though the IEP will say extend the time, and here is the summer and you worked with your child intensively and they don't need that much time and they have, you know, that attention spam deficits. And if you give them more time, they are wasting it and it become unstructured for them so they are not learning then say hey I have faced this in the summer and I gave him more time and I found out that he was playing so p please be aware more time for my child may be a little bit kind of not okay kind of go with what is gonna work for him this is what I've done at home but this is home. Right. The school setting is a little bit different because, I, again, I think the yeah, mind... Yeah, you could give them more time to take a test and, you know, and, and, I, and I've done this too. You just sit outside and just look out the window, you know. It's, you, you, don't want, you want to make sure that, you know, that extra time is meaningful. You, you know, you, you want to make it. sure that um, do they need prompts, you know. Is it, should, should you be checking in? You know, and if at all possible, uh, maybe note this in the IEP. It's like, you know, yeah, extra time is helpful, but maybe, uh, you know, you may want to check in every once in a while. Maybe a tap on the desk, you know, to get them back on track. So, um, another thing that uh, I wanted to also point out, um, we, when we were also talking about reviewing the IEP, is you also want to know for yourself. The IEP sometimes can be like, you know, this thick, you know, Every, you don't want to necessarily go in, a, it's like an encyclopedia. You want to sit there, flip through 10, you know, 20 pages. Okay, was it here? Was it here? The accommodation was here? Was, no, you don't want to do all of that. You want to kind of make a bulleted list of things that, you know, that um, your child should be receiving. Are they receiving, you know, this amount of, you know, their amount of minutes? You know, uh, you know is this therapy happening? You know, is, is a special education teacher, are, are they being pulled out? But you don't necessarily want to have to dig for that because you have a lot going on already. So why not make a bullet to list of some of those, th those things that you may want to address throughout the school year and then maybe even share the list with, the, uh, with the, uh, your student's teacher or whoever is in charge of administering that service. The other thing that is also important is to share the IEP. If your child is going to 6, 7, you know, the junior high, right. they will have many teachers. Make sure all of them knows that know that your child has an IEP and for those who are going to provide some form of accommodation which very likely 
they will provide accommodation share with them that list that Paula is talking about or share with them the IEP itself because if they have like one period out of the week like the art class or the library class or the the computer class it's once a week it's not every day so they may not have the opportunity to dig through the IEPs and whatnot. Again, you know, they have many, many, yeah. many students. So share with them the IEP, share with them the accommodation. If your child is good in art, share with that teacher, look, can you give him or her the opportunity to participate in project? The extracurricular activities can start as early as back to school. Right. Make sure you also have the, uh, the schedule. It may not be set in stone from the beginning because things they may shuffle. So when I say shuffle, they have those two weeks where they adjust. Maybe, you know, some of the kids may leave that school and they may have others or they may have, you know, more students incoming and they need to pull that teacher for something and they shuffle the schedule. However, I highly recommend that you ask about the schedule, not only for knowing what is what but also to follow and progress monitor those services right. as your list said make sure that your child is receiving those minutes and you know and also uh, from a student a, a student self-advocacy in that checklist in between you know if you taking that bulleted list and you know sharing it with with your child making sure that you know they understand that you know I'm supposed to be pulled out for so if if appropriate sometimes it's not appropriate sometimes it may be uh, more overwhelming but making sure that uh, whenever possible that your that student can be pulled out you know understands that you know they're supposed to be receiving the service or that they're aware of their schedule um, if they're struggling with organization you know making sure that they're checking in or they know who to go to uh, within the school to say, hey, you know, maybe it's a counselor or their case manager. Look, I'm struggling uh, keeping, uh, keeping up with my books and my assignments. You know, uh, that the student is aware and is able to speak up whenever possible. So this is also something you want to uh, think about as you're preparing for that school year. How much can I involve my child in their own advocacy? Great point, because we have to think about the future. If your kid is very little and very small at an early age, you may think, oh, they cannot. At least kind of push them, say, say your name. How was your summer? Um, what, do you like, what did you like last year about school? What was the favorite thing that you have done last year in school? So that teacher can have that information readily from the student because, you know, must feel is nothing about us without us. Absolutely. So use and utilize that skill that your child, if they are nonverbal, don't be shy to use any form of communication. Either they can write or sign language or technology or just a smile. I have seen students who doesn't have, you know, the abilities to speak or even use the technology because of their body, you know, uh, they are uh, wheelchair users and they have those severe disabilities where the body is not in sync with everything. But a smile I have seen as good as a smile the mm -hmm. teacher was nodding with a smile that told us that hey I like this and I right. would like to continue with it so make sure that you help your child to speak up and introduce themselves say what they have you know they have in mind about this upcoming school year my neighbor kid uh, this week I saw her and she has a learning disability and she's going to third grade and she says, I am scared. I said, of what? She says, they told me we will do the testing. I said, what is scared about the testing? She says, I need a lot of time. I said, why don't you tell that to your teacher? And I was looking at the little girl talking to me and I was very, very, very proud of her. And I'm very happy for her and for her parents because she says, oh, I can tell my teacher. I said, you surely can tell your teacher you need help. That's right. You know, uh, you bring up a, a valuable point. Sometimes children don't feel they, they have the right or they're, you know, that maybe that it's your, you know, it's not their role to let the teacher know that something's going on. So they go home, they tell you, you come back and you tell the teacher. You know, I assure you when they turn 18 or when they go off to school or they get their first job, the boss, that school will not want to talk to you. 
So um, it's good to, you know, get that, you know, get that understanding, being able to voice your concerns and again, advocate for yourself. Um, you, I, I appreciate you bringing that up. And another thing you brought up with communication, you know, uh, again, with a smile, you know, a, a student who may struggle with motor uh, issues, uh, one thing, you know, ha making sure the school understands how they communicate. So I remember, uh, you know, years ago, I knew of a, a student who they would blink their eyes, you know, two blinks for yes, one blink for no, you know, and that, might, and that, and that was a form of communication. As you said, one is a smile. Understanding and adding to that checklist of like, this is how my, you know, my student, commu you know, my child communicates, you know, when they like something, when they don't like something, when they agree, when they disagree, when they're in pain. You know, these are all important things. I assure you, if a teacher has like, you know, 60, 20, 10, you know, five students, you know, changing from year to year, they're not going to remember, you know, what's in this giant stack, uh, which is the child's IEP. Because, you know, the year is going and they're preparing for the next student or, you know, they're getting to know your student. So as much as possible, you want to make it as easy for yourself, for as easy for the teacher, and as easy and easy for your child to understand how, you know, you all can communicate. Half the battle is communication. You are absolutely right. So that communication is a key factor and also... Like I said earlier, our life is not the easiest because you have so much uh, to do. So that checklist for you to prepare is so important. Also, get yourself also a refresher on your rights. Ask those informed questions about policies. Is there any policies that have changed within the school? That's right. Because you have the big umbrella of IDEA that is protecting your child to receive services, but still and all, some schools, they function with policies, especially for those who have children who have some behavioral challenges. That's Think about discipline. Make sure you ask in open house, and don't miss that open house at no no cost. Try to make it because they will give you a packet of information, the student conduct, the, the book of conduct. You need to read those clauses and understand them. And if you have questions, don't be shy to ask the principal, the administration, what does that mean? What will it look like? My child may have, you know, some outbursts and they they are coming because of being overwhelmed or anxiety or whatever the case may be. So what? And if he shove and push somebody because they are nonverbal and they are trying to escape. And there are incidents of little kiddos, they are shoving and pushing others because they need to go to use the washroom. That's right. So what will be the action of that shoving and pushing? Are you going to consider that? And you bring up a good point. Over the summer, has any new behaviors arisen? Yeah. You know, kids grow over the summer. As you say, they meet new kids. You, you, you never know. Is there something behavior-wise that may not be in the behavior plan that the school should know about? It? Should it be added to the IEP? You know, uh, upon meeting new students, my child does this, this, and that. You may, they may experience this. They get overwhelmed. You know, um, I'm and glad you have you and you up. have the puberty. You have the, the right. natural developmental stages of our youth when they go through those changes. Make sure that they are going to be, you know, aware of what is going on within. You have to be mindful of all the changes that the child go through, and you communicate that to the teacher. They are human beings, they may forget, they may be parent themselves, but they forget yeah. because they are, they can get caught up in the moment and they have to get through the day. Bottom line is to get yourself a checklist of to-do things beside the book bag, the binders, and the colorful right. pencils and all of that good all stuff. all the fun stuff. Right, <laughs> uh, and the lunch box. But also make that checklist for the special education purpose and refresh your mind by reading the IEP and what have you. And one thing I also want uh, you guys to take a look at um, is our parent, the parent guide, the educational rights and responsibilities, understanding special education in Illinois parent guide. That there is also something that uh, will assist you in navigating uh, the special education process here in Illinois. Some of the expectations of uh, the special education system, your rights as a parent. It, it never hurts. You can download it online and uh, it's broken up through, you know, 
from the beginning to requesting an IEP to transition, um, you name it, the IEP process. And don't forget to call us. We are here to support you, answer your question, and address your concerns. Anything that can or be a concern in special education, you can uh, reach out to one of us and we'll be more than happy to help you out. Well, we are down to, we are actually out of time. So I want to thank, thank you for joining us this week. And, um, you know, good luck with your back to school needs. And, you know, make sure you prepare, prepare, prepare. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you. Sabina. You are very welcome. I almost forgot to thank you. <laughs> Have a great school year.